Welcome traders back to the 2019 Pokemon Trading Card Game Regional here in Hartford, Connecticut. We are here in the finals of this tournament brought to you by... <coughs> I've got a little full grip gaming. Full bring grip games. Bringing in here, full LGN. Uh, bringing in uh, our sponsorship here for LGN streams. Here, uh, if you guys want to purchase any Pokemon singles for them this weekend, use the code LGN10. That's for this weekend only, and it's only for Pokemon singles. Again, that's LGN10. That's, that's right. John. LGN10 <laughs> for that 10% <laughs> off deal. So we've got a wonderful finals match for you guys here. We are looking at a brand new deck to win this expanded format. We have seen. Yeah. Multiple different varieties of decks win. We've seen Zorark win, Night March win. We have seen Drampa Garb win. And now we have a finals match of Turbo Rayquaza GX versus Trevenant Locke. How are you feeling about that? Uh, I'm honestly liking uh, Jose in Rayquaza. I think Jose is due for the win. He has played this deck all season, has had numerous top eight finishes, both at the regional level as well as different inter international events uh, this past season, and all sticking true to Rayquaza. So um, I'm hoping he can pull us out here. I think it's as long as he has an aggressive first turn here, Trevenant's not going to have a matchup for him. Big difference, for sure. And so we are about to get in that action right now with Sam on the right and Jose on the left. I'm really curious to see how this lock turns out. I mean, it, it's not exactly improbable for a lock to be able to pull off a cheap win. Yep. But with all that energy with that free retreat, it's just so clutch on Jose's side. We might finally see Rayquaza pull out a big win. Uh, yeah, and I, th and I think we're going to hear underway right now. Jose also gets to go first here. Rayquaza GX and at the spot. Phantom on Sam's side. We're going to see a uh, mysterious treasure coming to the uh, bin first, discarding a grass energy. Yeah, and of course we have our typical inventory we need to take here. Digging through the deck, making sure that you have all of your key components in there. No nothing's prized. Of course, Zerara GX is going to be incredibly relevant with the free retreat on any lightning energy energized Pokemon. So it's going to be really clutch. It's going to be a big deal. And in addition to that, though, there are a couple little tech options that Jose could pull off here. I mean, Zerkatry GX, not quite as relevant in this matchup, but there are a couple ways where he could leverage it in his favor. Uh, but really, it's just going to be big beatdowns with Rayquaza. 100% agree there. Ultra Ball uh, being uh, eyeing down on Jose's side. Going to shuffle his deck first here after playing that Mysterious Treasure. One thing to note, on Sam's deck, there are also a few cards here that um, are not going to be too optimal in his matchup. So if he can find a way to get rid of those um, as soon as possible, those cards being Enhanced Hammer, um, because there are zero special energy in Jose's list there. So three dead cards there that a Sam can uh, get rid of those. They can optimize his draw to get the other cards he needs. Yeah, and looking down Sam's list, we see a couple... I mean, for the most part, it looks pretty typical for a Trevenant deck in this current format, in this current set composition. But with those three copies of Countercatcher, I think that is so clutch for Sam to be able to bring up something when he's falling behind and then maybe leave it locked in for the rest of the game. Fully agree there. Max Lux are going to look at top six cards of your deck here. Find a basic energy you find there. Attach it to one of your bench Pokemon. Jose does find a lightning energy. Looks like he has a Coco GX Ultra Ball Grass energy also in hand. Not sure the fourth car was a draw support here, so he may need to eye down a Tapu Lele. Oh, that is an N to the far. Yeah, Attachment for turn. And looks like we have that discard right there, <laughs> digging a little bit deeper into his deck for the... He's eyeing the Mars Shadow for that let loose after that Ultra Ball. Oh, wow. Ball. And if I'm Jose, that's actually a pretty attractive option to be able to stick his opponent in a position where he just doesn't have that much to work off of. Let's see he's opting out to get the Shaman EX uh, prior to that decision there. Going to try to draw some more cards here, see if he can get some more explosion out of his deck. Going to be a full six cards here, so opting the Ultra Ball away to end and going to Shaman for six cards here. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And interesting to note, the Tapu Koko GX, because it's discarded, it won't have that extra option in this matchup to be able to swoop in for a surprise knockout, but not terribly relevant in the first place because of Zarara GX being able to give all of Jose's Pokemon with Lightning Energy, that crucial free retreat. We do see Max Luxor number two coming down here, as well as Zeaora GX coming to the bench. Uh, does he find another energy? One Lightning Energy at the very top going right to Zeaora GX. Keep in mind here, Jose, while even under item lock, does love the GX tag of Zeaora. Full voltage, going to be able to attach five base energy from your discard pile anywhere you want on the field. Um, very strong utility card once energy start going to the discard pile. Oh, absolutely. And 
at the point where we're at right now, all Jose really needs is just a lightning energy for that active Pokemon. And it's going to be curtains for any Phantom, any Trevenant that sits out there and doesn't have something locked. And so we do see a pass over to Sam's side after Verse Seekering back for the end. Uh, Mysterious Treasure going to discard Enhanced Hammer uh, and going to search for any Psychic type or Dragon type Pokemon out of his deck here. That's right. And we've still got the same thing going on on Sam's side, that same general level of inventory checking, making sure that all of the core components are there, seeing what lines of Trevenant might be there, to name just a few things. We have these single copy card inclusions like the Ditto Prism Star. Not quite as relevant here, though, because it's basically just another Phantom. He can kind of skirt having to search for that. We do see here, he's an eye down to Tapu Lele here. He does play a one of Bridget. He maybe went and looked and grabbed that here to grab some additional Phantom. And right on cue there, Bridget, search for three basic Pokemon and put them right on your bench. Yeah, and I think that Sam's options are pretty much mapped out for him here. Just more Phantoms, pretty much. And a little bit of a pseudo Phantom there in Ditto Prism Star. He's like, hey guys, you know what? I'm one of the group too. I'm not quite like the rest <laughs> of y'all, but I'm here. I'm in the game, folks, and you know what? I might kind of be the odd one out. I might be the black swan in your group, but I'm still your bros. I'm still part <laughs> of your group. So One thing I would, thought would have been interesting here as well is if you would have grabbed the Wobbuffet here and try to take away that uh, Thunderclap zone ability from Zaya or GX, but I also just put a Rescue Scarf down. No d valley no energy, so no Ascension here. No Trevenant, full items on Jose's side. Lightning energy to the activate quasi here. Going to be able to have that free retreat now, as we just mentioned. Yeah, and we've reached the point in the game just about where we've got five energy on the board, right? And so because of that, effectively, Jose is just one energy card away from being able to obliterate any single active Pokemon in Sam's deck, right? So actually the item lock not being here doesn't hurt Sam nearly as much as it would in other board states. For here though, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Sam can just go ahead and evolve as normal. Trevenant being knocked out here from a Dragon Burst attack on Rayquaza's side. Trevenant does come to the bench. Ace, the trainer. Ace trainer. Because he fell, from be fell behind, he is gonna be able to play that Ace Trainer card, draw six new cards, fresh new hand, and Jose is heavily disrupted. And here's where those three counter catcher can be really, really relevant. Even though we've got the zone, we've got the Thunderclap zone in play right now, with Zerara giving those Pokemon free retreat, he could still bring up that Shaman EX as a target, a lock target, and force Jose to draw into a Lightning Energy. Absolutely there. Ace Trainer going to let draw the six cards here. Counter Catcher as well. So big turn here. D Valley. And then we're going to see the Ascension for the Trevenant. Uh, still the note here with the five energy, 150 here. He can't take out the 110 HP oh, and Jose's, Trevenant. And Jose, oh, oh, sorry for interrupting you. He, <laughs> Jose, Jose has a lightning energy in his so hand he already right has now. A retreat. three cards, yeah. We play 14 energy in your deck. You're bound to get it <laughs> but, whenever you need. Yeah, but the thing is he only runs seven lightning. So with the three that are in play, it's definitely a lot harder for him to yeah, hit it. I fully agree there. Trevenant Forest Curse going to be in full effect right now. No items on Jose's side. But to your note, Lightning Energy is there. Sleeve's getting rolled up. He's got to go in with Dragon Burst. Did he draw for turn? Uh, I don't. How many cards did he riffle his hand? If he riffled three cards, then he definitely drew for turn. Yeah. But we do see the attachment. do see the knockout here. On to Sam's turn. Yeah, and that's all Jose is going right. to do right now is pretty much explode, get a big turn, and just run through the Trevenants. And that's exactly what it's looking like right now. You know, uh, definitely an interesting combination of decks here in the finals. I'm And at this point, looking down Sam's list, I'm eyeing any type of card I could see that could give him an out to what looks like a pretty lopsided board position. There's no basic energy discard here. It's all enhanced hammers. It's this one copy of Faba. Really good little, little uh, variety play here we haven't seen in many Trevenant lists. But... I just don't see any outs to this current position. Do you? I fully agree there. I think this is the point where I, I don't see any way for uh, Sam to take anything here. As long as Jose doesn't bench any more Pokemon, each Pokemon has a Lightning Energy, so Counter Catcher is completely irrelevant um, to any plays there. So uh, let loose going to try to do something here, but there's enough energy on board for Jose just to take the knockout yeah. on Trev. You know, I think the only thing that Sam can really do is just brute force that active Rayquaza GX, hope he can knock it out, and hope beyond hope that Jose cannot follow that up with anything to attack with on the bench. 
I, full, I fully agree with that there. Let lose, going to put both players to four cards in hand. Um, however, Jose, Jose right now looking strong. Sam needs to get some energy here. Um, you almost you almost wish it was kind of like the OG Trevenant version with the bursting balloons. Yeah. You know, to do that, <laughs> to do that additional damage there. Like, dude, take out the rest of the scarf, put in the bursting balloons here so we can do that extra 60 damage. Then we'd be in a game. Oh, you know what? Let's see. I... And we, what we've seen on stream so far today is we've seen a couple different varieties of Trevenant, and one of them was running counter energy with Hannah's list. That actually would be pretty helpful in this specific board state, but Sam does not run any copies of it. He's just pure consistency, those four psychic, those four mystery, and leaving it at that, but not very helpful in this state. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think a lot of players, when they, when they brought Trevenant to uh, Connecticut this weekend, had in mind, hey, we need to be ready for the Rayquaza match. The Rayquaza typically in low numbers, which it still was this tournament, a little bit higher than normal. But Trevenant definitely wanted to make sure it had outs to Zorark. And I think that's a lot of how these builds were, were made, were manifested from, is just to take out the Zorark matchup, which does not have a lot of synergy with trying to take out the Rayquaza matchup. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I got to admit, just seeing, I, I, I'm very... I'm honestly, even when Kirk and I were talking about the top eight composition and who we thought would see in the finals, what decks we would see in the finals, the one thing I was most surprised to see here is just Rayquaza GX having a bop fest against these Trevenants. I don't think I would have really seen that in too many circumstances. You know, it's like we got Doctor Strange with the 10 million plus <laughs> futures, and he only sees the one where Rayquaza is just going bop, bop, bop against... Trevenant break all day. I think the thing that like you know people kind of uh, sometimes overlook as well is that this is mirrored to how how Turbo Darkler was, but it's better because it has self um, energy acceleration that does not need Max Lux or a Dark Patch. Yeah. So exactly. so in that point there, Trevenant really can't have, does not have an answer for it unless it plays the Flare Grunts, it plays the Plumerias, it plays the bursting the balloons to do extra damage there uh, to mitigate that matchup. Precisely, and that I think based off of all the different ways of acceleration here in Jose's list, this is an even better matchup for him than Pico Rom would have against, say, Trevenant, relatively, where there's yeah. a couple little more outs and ways around that. So we do see here Psychic Energy and the Rescue Scarf going to the active spot. Mysterious Treasure going to find himself a third Trevenant right now, um, trying to get some more Silent Fears and, and, and trade it that way. Um, Jose already up the three prizes, so he's going to have to figure out a way to escalate this process. Um, and really start taking damage on his Rayquaza here. Oh, absolutely. Now, he can do two Tree Slams the following turn, but he doesn't have any energy on the on those Trevenants just yet to do that. So he's just going to stay attacking past. <laughs> just another Dragon Break, just four bops in a row. And with a little bit more damage, I think Sam is creeping back into an upset win here. He, unfortunately for Sam, though, he doesn't really have a whole lot of energy, but I think one possibility is to be able to attack at some point with that Tapu Lele. Definitely there, Tapu Lele to be able to hopefully do, uh, uh, you know, if it's one energy, 80 damage, double energy, going to be able to do 100 damage yeah. here. Um, you, oh, sorry, but one thing he, we could see is, uh, I'm wondering if that single copy of the Wobbuffet that is still floating around. And yes, it is, because he was yeah. eyeing it down the first Bridget, but changed his mind to that play there. It's a good point. Wobbuffet could still be a big opportunity here as well. Great call there on that. It's after he silent fears. Actually, one more time, Wobbuffet can have enough uh, damage on board to take out the Trevenant. And it looks like right there on cue, Wobb sliding to the front. Yeah, that's right. And it, although I think the challenge is deciding whether to keep it in the hand or put it out on the board. And there are advantages to both. If he puts it straight into play like he's doing right now, he is effectively end proof. If he leaves it in his hand he is not end proof but he saves it from being knocked out at some point but i think sam is okay with that when it really comes to comes right down to it because he has it sitting there and all he needs is just another energy to knock out that ray if he would have held it in the hand also it would have been hard to be able to pull off the retreat as well as the attachment for the wob to attack as well so good good eye on sam's part to put the wob down here and hope jose does not have the guzma to take the ko on it Silent Fear again, going to put everything at 90. So this could be a big turn of events here where um, if Wild could take the knockout here on the Rayquaza, another Silent Fear could take the knockout on the Shaman. We may be able to turn this game around to a 2-2 prize course. Although I think I may have had a little bit of tunnel vision with the Wobbuffet before because if Jose had Guzma, he could just bring up the Lele, knock it out for game. Yep. But at the same point, since it seems like with this level of hesitance, Jose does not quite have it yet, I think it's going to be crucial for him to set up his second Rayquaza to follow up in case his first one goes down. 
we will see here another Rayquaza right on cue to your point. Ray, uh, Rescue Energy, Rescue Stretcher, Tapu Coco Prism, and a Lightning Energy going to go to the bin. Uh, more than likely, the Lightning Energy is going to come to this Rayquaza because we don't want any counter catcher shenanigans there. Um, he might just stick a more his whole hand away to hopefully get to that Guzma. Yeah, do, do you have a good feeling on the number of cards left in Jose's deck? Uh, I do not. He has played a few Sycamores now. I mean, he got, he got the uh, Ace Trainer 2 to Sycamore Lighting Energy yeah, as I mean, well. Uh, obviously, he's not decking himself out by playing it right now, but he has to be pretty close at this pretty point. Pretty close for sure. After all the stormy winds as well, um, definitely close down there. I'm not sure if he has a Guzman hand already, and if he does, um, he may be looking at game next turn. Yeah. It looks like he didn't hit a grass energy to follow up with oh, that. Oh, that's he has a lightning energy in his hand. I don't think he, I don't think he's attached this turn. He just had the stormy. He's not winds. attached yet. No, just stormy winds. Because prior to he had the six energy on field. Stormy winds going to come down. I mean, sorry, lightning energy should come down on this Rayquaza, the fresh one. And then if he could find a grass energy here, um, here's one thing that I, I think may have been better to go to the Zaya Aura instead. Uh, because if he attaches the Aura, it doesn't matter what energy he draws next to attack with. Yeah, now he attaches on the Rayquaza, he has to have the Grass energy to take the knockout with. Yeah, and the liability of going with Zerora, which is it not being in range of knocking out that Tapu Lele GX, is mm -hmm. a really minor thing. That's, yeah, agree. Especially when he's not a run prize now, so it's just give me anything else, even but the Lele. I just need a way to take this knockout. Yeah, because now it just comes down to, okay, so can he knock out the Wobbuffet or not? Exactly. That's all there is. Yeah, Wildfuss going to be able to sweep through these different attackers outside of Rayquaza GX and take the win that way. But I guess to, to Jose's point as well, um, Rayquaza can wall here for a few. Trevor's mm -hmm. not going to take any knockouts there. Um, Wild's not going to take any knockouts for a while. So we'll just wall behind his Rayquaza until that grass energy does show up. Um, on to Sam's side. We do see computer search discarding enhanced hammer. And I didn't see, I think he's inside the other card yet. Going to be Juniper. Search for any card in his deck. And going to yep. be an end of one here. And it comes down to this so many times. He's come from behind situations set up by that end. The de ending the opponent down to one, ending yourself down to a reasonably sized hand. I'm excited to see if Sam can pull it off here. So many things have to go Sam's way here. And the first one is simply... Jose doesn't need to hit a hot card off the top or the second. Jose's been running extremely hot right now, uh, hitting cards off of end of ones and low and low uh, Marshall let loose all day. Uh, Sam going to need to find some Guzmas here to chain this Wob attack on those different Pokemon on the bench. I didn't get a good look at that one card that he flashed us, but... Rescue Scarf as well, so Wob can even come back here. So Wob can even survive a turn. I think that might be a Dowsing Machine in his hand. That's a Dowsing Machine... When in doubt, I mean, all your Pokemon have free retreaters, so I guess it doesn't matter too much who you bring up. Um, yeah, and it goes back to just what you were saying a minute or two ago, which is even if he whiffs on the energy, he can still put himself in a solid position, just wait it out for a bit until he hits one. I agree there. Um, another thing he could do, too, if he does uh, find uh, even a lightning energy, he can't sky return his Shaman back as oh, well. There's a let loose. He does have a let loose here. So now the real question is, Here's what I don't like about this uh, promotion either, because now he's all in on this Pokemon being knocked out here. Wobbuffet is by Barricade, not going to be able to Thunderclap Zone a free retreat. That's right. So That's right. right now it is there, or he's, he's, he's saying, all right, you know what? If you knock me out, you're going to have to go through with it here. Um, and if he can just find a one grass energy, he can take the returning knockout. Yes, yeah, so it looks like he's basically forcing himself to Guzma out the Wobbuffet in order to get out of this. Or, I mean, just just something to be able to get the knockout this turn despite the ability lock. There's, there's oh, there's the grass energy. And, and this is a point there, too. It's grass and dousing. But if you would attach that energy instead of Rayquaza to, well, that would be kind of a flip play there. If he attached to the active Zeora, he would be able to retreat, but then have enough energy for Rayquaza here. But he's one play out. He has energy here. If uh, he doesn't get end again, he does have game. Yeah, and he hasn't played a supporter for the turn yet, so he has a couple grass energy just sitting there, and he doesn't have a Guzma here. I'm I'm a little I'm a little lost. I think maybe he just doesn't have a Guzma to be able to get out of the active position. Well, we'll see here. Dallas Machine gets rid of uh, the grass and Skyfield Rescue Stretcher, gonna be able to bring some cars back into his deck here. Grabs Tapu oh, Lele. There we go. That's our roundabout way to get. Are we going to gonna the see the Guzma? Effect? Yeah, it looks like and we're seeing the Guzma. Energy and grass yep. energy. There we go. Game one going to oh, Jose, Jose Morero. Very strong start here. However, 
not to be so short here, Sam played a great game considering the odds. I agree, and I think that he played to his outs. He did pretty much what he could given the composition of the two lists, and he was going for effectively what Trevenant really wants to mm -hmm. try for in these matchups, which is even if you were getting bombarded with a bunch of basic energy attacks, and you don't have a way to enhance out of it, you don't have a way to fab out of it, you still just do what you can. You can try to get out the main threat, which is exactly what he did. He used that Wob effect to great effect. It's just not enough. Yeah, I fully agree there. Uh, he played everything he could. End of one. Can't be, can't be more upset with that there. Didn't give him anything. Top deck the Mars Shadow. See, Jose has, you know what? I need this here. Let's just let loose here. Let's even get the game here. Finds the Dowsing. Finds the Double Grass Energy. And was able to pull it off. The victory here, game one. One more to go. That's right. What is Sam's strategy going into this next game? A lot of what he was doing before. I felt like he had just about the optimal approach. I'm looking for more counter catchers and... It seems like the opportunity just wasn't there last game at all. Uh, so it seems like maybe if there's a single Pokemon at some point with no energy on it, that might be a good target for Counter Catcher. Uh, maybe after a Pokemon like a Rayquaza is knocked out, maybe bringing up something that's a little less built up in case Zerara GX is not in play. Mm -hmm. So a couple things like that might be a path to victory. Uh, other than that, you know, it's he's really at the mercy of luck on Jose's side. Fortunate enough for Sam, he is going to go first this game here, so you can't get that Trevenant lock earlier. But, with the, like you said earlier in, the, in this tournament, with the uh, banning of Wally, there's not going to be any turn one item lock in this game right now. So Jose is still going to get at least one turn to explode. And if he does, we could see something mirrored to game one. But I would venture to say Sam here can maybe pull off, getting some Trevenants out, attach some energy, D-Valley, let loose, and maybe Jose cannot get optimized off of that let loose. Yeah, and for what it's worth, I think that Sam's going to be able to win the Stadium War here. His Dimension Valley is probably mm -hmm. going to stick, so he should have that cheaper attacking option for the rest of the game. Nevertheless, it's just not beefy enough to be able to handle Rayquaza and Dragon Break. So I... And all honesty, if I'm going to be sincere here, uh, which I hope I am since I'm a pretty sincere guy, but I think that it's going to just basically end up like game one unless somebody dead draws. So we're going down to the action now. Psychic Energy going to the Ditto Prism in the active spot, and then N. And then on Jose's side, he does have a Zeo Aura GX here. Uh, looks like a little bit of a camera shake there, but we're still there. We still got all the action. We still got the full view. And let's see what Sam can pull out here in this game, too. Yep, and with that Zerara GX in play, he, Jose is guaranteed not to have it prized, obviously. So unless there's an absurd situation where multiple Rayquaza GX are in the prize cards and Re Jose does not draw into them, he does have that as an overall approach, an overall option. One thing, maybe incidentally, maybe by plan we did not see from Jose was that Ho-Oh EX being relevant where Rebirth with its ability lets you get energy back from the discard pile, get that Ho-Oh EX back into play from the discard pile, charge up your Dragon Breaks even more. I think that Jose really wasn't that worried about it, even if he didn't draw into it, because it's not that making that big of a difference when you only need six energy to knock everything out on Sam's side. Mysterious Stretcher here going to discard the Cynthia. Uh, I'm going to look for any psychic type Pokemon. It looks like he's going to be eyeing down that early Wobbuffet here. Going to be able to hard retreat that Ditto and bring in that Bide Barricade. Just to completely shut off Stormy Winds, compete up, completely shut, sl shut off the Thunderclap Zone, ancient, uh, ancient uh, dance uh, there with the type of Coca Prism. So uh, lots of different uh, utility here for Wobbuffet. Yeah, and I'm just concerned that if he goes a more aggressive Wobbuffet route, that's only going to prolong the inevitable at that point, where he's going to give Jose access to all of his items in his deck, meaning additional uses to Guzma on top of all that. So I think just going for the typical game plan of an item lock is ideal, but at least having that Wobbuffet option out there is going to be great. And here, because he knows he doesn't have an item lock turn one, it's going to be great to at least have an ability lock. Fully see that there. I think we do see double ho -Oh, Max Elixir, and a Sycamore here. So if he has a target for uh, Max Elixir, he can... Um, go ahead and attach that there and just stick them more away to ho for a later rebirth. Um, but I don't see much there. It might just have to be a straight-up Sycamore and just discard it all. Eyeing down, putting an Oracorio on the bench. But decides, you know what, we don't need this card. Let's get rid of all of these here in a to big, the bid. In a big hit, it is not to be able to use that Max Elixir. But it's okay because it's only one Energy Acceleration card out of many. 
and it's not exactly like Jose will not eventually hit 6 energy on the board. We do see a Battle Compressor here, a uh, few energy as well, and I think that's another end in the middle of his hand with Skyfield. Battle Compressor is probably going to be the next card he plays here. Just a thinnest deck out some, but he needs some bench Pokemon. I don't see anything else to put on his bench right now uh, um, to really start attaching the ener these energies to. Oh, no doubt. Although, one thing I am a little curious about is it looks like Jose didn't hit any basic Pokemon or any outs to any basic Pokemon. So one thing I am curious about is if Jose might get pigeonholed into an aggressive Zerara GX approach this game. Yeah, absolutely. There's Zerara GX having two fantastic attacks. The GX attack ultimately the one of choice here with the full Voltage GX. Pretty much similar to the Nitro, or actually same exact thing as a Nitro GX on the Turtonator uh, GX of previous. To be able to attach five energy from discard pile anywhere you want on your field. Okay, and looks like the party is still going for Jose. He's got that Tapu Lele GX in play. And I'm a little curious to see if we will get to witness an awkward but hilarious full voltage GX. We've got the attachment and just the pass. So Jose's like, no fancy play syndrome here. I'm just going to go ahead and stick to my game. I think it's going to be a great scenario right here where he's one. Here comes the end and away here. But if you get some red quads on the bench here, right there, like you said, full voltage GX going to be able to attach energy from the discard pile under item lock too. So pseudo max elixirs really set from mm -hmm. the discard pile, bring those energies back, and uh, set up Rayquaza for heavy damage here. However, Wobbuffet is still preventing any free retreats from Zare or GX. So it's going to be stuck in an active spot unless Jose can find a way to Guzma or melee retreat some of the energy off. Yeah, I want to bring up one point right here about what both players have been doing in terms of their approach in this match. I noticed just a whole bunch of patience on both sides, and I think that's a sign of a really good player to have patience when you feel like you really want to do something. Like, for example, full voltage GX would have been a cute play to make on the first turn, but by no means the best play because you want to go ahead and save it, wait on it for a little while, get those requests in play before you do it. Maybe even save your GX attack for something else. And Sam, on the other hand, his whole deck is patience. And I think that his display in game one was a solid example of that, playing to his outs and playing from behind in a way that gave him the best hope of winning. Sam didn't do much on his turn either. He just has, he has not also got a Trevenant or a, another Phantom down either as well. So um, right now, all in on by Barricade, doing a Psychic Assault attack for 10 damage onto Zaya Aura. Here comes the first Rayquaza here. Won't be able to do Stormy Winds. However, can still put it to the bench. And on top of that, Jose's been able to dump a bunch of basic energies at this point. So we'll eventually get to see, probably sooner rather than later, a weaponized Rayquaza, a weaponized Zorara GX, and maybe even a viable Tapu Lele GX attacking option. I would love to see him get another Rayquaza here as well. Max Elix are going to come down here, find the energy off this top six. He can attach it to Rayquaza with the Max Elixirs. That's two Elixirs that he got zero value out of in the discard pile so far. Yeah, and I think it may be a real testament to this matchup if Jose is still able to pull it out despite not having a wonderful first turn and a couple wasted max elixirs just due to circumstances because if he is able to get past all of that and yet just go through the motions with full voltage GX among other things then it really shows you just how lopsided it might be for Rayquaza. Dowsing Machine really wants to get another energy right now going to play another one off the Dowsing Machine gets the lightning if he get a grass. It. He has the option of the grass or the lightning here. Let's see which one he decides on. Lightning energy going to the Tapu Lele. And then we see here, he, so interesting if he does go to Tapu Lele, prevents his, presents his deck for cut. We're going to see a verse seeker here for the Professor Sycamore. Going to be able to discard his entire hand for draw seven cards. Um, and also still has not attached an energy for turn. I'm wondering if he's just going for a knockout in this setting. I, I'm I'm curious to because it would be a little awkward, but I think that he could maybe well, let's see, without energy switch is a, a real option. I don't never mind, I don't see that happening. But a good solid full voltage GX is a good use of this turn regardless. One hundred percent agree with that there. Back oppressor here. He's gonna do an energy count to see if he has the full five and a discard to take the full advantage of full voltage. <laughs> yeah. And and see if he can get some additional dead cards out of this deck right here. Ultra ball, grass energy. Um 
And let's see what if he gets rid of a third card here. Looks like he puts down an N. Looks like he's fishing it just to have it, giving himself better odds with the VS Seeker. He runs three copies of VS Seeker total in his deck. And he only runs one copy of Tapu Lele GX, which is on the bench. No more searching for supporters at this point directly for it. But by fishing for that N and putting it in the discard pile, he's effectively doubled or even tripled the odds of him being able to get N in the late game if he really needs it. I see a couple of prism cards in his hand. Or maybe, no, sorry, I thought it was a prism. It was Verse Seeker with the gold border there. Probably going to bring back another Sycamore. Um, just to kind of give himself a chance that if for some reason Sam does pull off item lock, he wants to get the full use out of Versus Seeker. Grabs the Sycamore. Going to put down that Shaman Prism Star. Shaman Prism Star with that attack. Flower Storm, 30 times the amount of basic energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So it is for two grass energy, a basic Shaman. Or uh, a uh, non-EX uh, requires, I mean. And I think this might be an even more terrifying setup for Jose than the first game because even though it isn't nearly as explosive as what we saw with full voltage GX going full throttle with everything in play, then we might have a circumstance where even Shaman Prism Star is a viable attacking option in the late game. 100% there. And yeah, they're going to be, probably, it might even be the early part too, part here too. He's going to put the three army Quaza and then split the energy differential between the Tapu Lele and the Shaman. Um, Shaman going to need both Grass Energy. It actually goes to all in on Zeo Aura. Going to use his Plasma Fist attack here to start sweeping through Sam's field. Going on to Sam's turn, we do draw. Finds an Enhanced Hammer. Also has access to Rescue Scarf and a few Energy in his hand. Right, and of course Enhanced Hammer not doing anything against these basic energy. However, of course, by having this exact 60, Sam was able to get to this point in the tournament. A little unfortunate that all those enhanced hammers are going to be useless against the basic energy. Not quite as helpful as Crushing Hammer in this matchup, but still an overall solid list, just a bad circumstance. Sam doing an inventory check of Jose's discard pile. Wanted to see what cards have been played so far versus Seeker. Card of choice here. Going to look like he's going to play N. No prizes have been taken yet here in game two. However, if you look at board state currently, um, Jose has mirrored last game. In fact, probably a little bit better. Um, and it, it's going to be, let's, let's see if Sam could turn around, maybe get some phantoms out here. Um, or he can continue to onsault here with psychic assault and apply pressure attacking that way. Yeah, and once this one Wobbuffet goes down, there really isn't that much left to defend Sam. We're sure it was able to slow down Jose's setup. But I feel like Wobbuffet swooping in and being able to knock something out was essential to Sam's narrow but still real hope of winning the first game. And with Wobbuffet potentially going down so soon, that might be a little bit harder to pull off this game because then you need some way to fetch it back like the Super Rod. Understandably there. Psychic Energy and Rescue Scarf going on to Ditto Prism. Do we see any other cards? He is not hitting much at all this game. Very, very anemic game for him right now. Psychic Assault to do 20 more damage to the Zeo or GX, putting it at 30 damage total. Max Lixer, Lightning Energy as well for Jose. He can really just start ex accelerating, get all the energy he can out here. So when Trevenant does, you know, inevitably come out here, he can just run through the trees. And we got that Max Elixir. Plenty of energy options there. Gets that Grass for Shaman, weaponizing it and turning it into a tertiary third attacker for Jose on top of everything else he has. So even if something bizarre were to happen to this Zarara GX, he would still have a Ray, he would still have a Shaman, and he would even have a Tapu Lele GX, which conveniently exploits Dimension Valley in some awkward situations. Dimension Valley coming down here. Skyfield being played by Jose. And then Plasma Fist. Going to knock out that Wobbuffet here. To note, Plasma Fist's secondary effect is this Pokemon cannot attack the following turn. Yep, but right on cue, Jose is able to get that Bide Barricade out of play. And so unless Sam were to immediately bring up Wobbuffet recycled from Super Rod, then Jose could just retreat for free, bring up Dragon Break, and be like, good game, son. Yeah. I don't think Sam has access to another bench Pokemon here. This could be the game right now. Um, he has Ultra Ball. He does have Ultra Ball here. Uh, I think he's deciding if he wants to go after a Trevenant or if he wants to get another Phantom. Um, or does he have Rescue uh, Stretcher to get back to Wob and risk repeat that strategy? Oh, that's not an Ultra Ball. That's a Counter Catcher. 
I think that might be it. So N, uh, they're discussing what they want to do here between both players. So maybe Sam's just trying to calculate the exact circumstances. He flashed that counter catcher, so there might have been some confusion about it there. But nope, he's just going to go ahead and shuffle up, draw himself a new hand of six, have Jose draw a new hand of five. I think what he was looking at there is looking at Shamu's retreat cost if counter catcher would have actually been a factor. Um, so uh, decides, you know, I'm going to hold this card maybe for later on. I can get some use out of it. And I'm going to end right now and see if he can find some base Pokemon here. But if Sam does not find a single basic Pokemon, Jose is going to be here, your Hartford Pokemon Regional Champion. That's right. So <laughs> They're bantering about something. <laughs> There's a counter catcher right back for him. And I think uh, we got that Phantom to keep the game alive. That is the Phantom, double Phantom, fortunate enough for him there. So he will be able to chain these Trevenants um, as they come up here. And I wonder if it seems like Sam is contemplating saving the Trevenants for later on the bench or possibly evolving the active one. Is he, is he going to retreat the Ditto? I think he has the Trevenant in hand, so he could retreat the Ditto, evolve the Trevenant, so he could at least get the next turn Trev break yeah, and, 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 then, and Ascension it, this one. And then save the Rescue Scarf as yep, well. Yep, Be able to chain Trevenants a, a lot easier here. He's going to go ahead and find another tree right now. And Jose is just going to... Retreat here, and we're going to start seeing Dragon Burst running through Sam's board. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, although I wonder if Jose is going to try to do any follow-up here, maybe set up yet another attacker. But he's like, you know what? I already have all of my choices. I I have a million and ones right w ways right now to be able to knock out this Trevenant. So uh, interesting he goes for the Shaman. I think it's a little more vulnerable. But at the same time, in other ways, it's not – too cons it's it's a conservative play is what I mean to say yeah. because it's a non EX non GX Pokemon even though he runs the risk of giving Sam some energy to knock out and send to the discard pile Jose still got three solid attackers on the bench. I think the big thing with that too as well is if Shaman was sitting on the bench and Silent Fear did start to go, Shaman would be the first one to get knocked out with the lowest HP. So if he attacks with it first, he can get the at least useful mileage out of it versus it possibly losing the at, on the bench there and no knockouts at all. That's a wonderful point. So he can just pivot in whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. And right on cue there, he does say Silent Fear, uh, him being Sam. However, right back to Jose's turn, instantly, flower, flower Burst there, attack for knockout. Yep, and uh, it seems like we're just going to see the same thing a couple turns in a row at this point where we'll see a little bit of a Valiant effort here by Sam playing to his outs, doing whatever he can with it. But Shame is just like, Okay, I'll go ahead and hit again. I think this, this flower board, storm, flower storm, flower storm. I think this board is just too tough for Sam to combat from. But you know, he has he has to have played this at some point today. There have been numerous requests in this field, so he has to have some kind of core strategy. Especially knowing while he didn't get to play his top four match, he's able to watch the whole match on stream. He had to have been thinking of a way to combat this matchup, so he's going to try to execute that strategy now. And step one here is Ace Trainer. Yup, that's right. Playing to your outs involves with Trevenant playing come from behind cards as much as you can. Jose's done an excellent job. Can't stress this enough in terms of giving himself no options, n n giving Sam nothing to work with, giving Sam nothing to be able to counter catch her up and just leave in the active position. Instead, he's charged everything up. Anything can attack here. Anything can knock out for one shots other than Tapu Lele GX, and it's just... It's just brutal. Ace Trainer here going to put Sam to six cards and Jose to three. Uh, Trevin uh, Phantom does come down here. I do not see a Trevenant. Uh, there is a Trevenant in hand if he wants to apply that Forest Curse item lock on Jose. Yeah, and I, I think that he's contemplating applying the item lock, but at this point he just needs to give himself some attacking options. And... I think that there's some utility in being able to get that out right now, even if he's not going to deal damage, because you don't want Jose getting back outs to Guzma. You don't want him being able to fish for that for game, for those two prizes that Sam's just exposed himself to with that Tapu Lele GX. And after Ace Trainer also does a let loose here, so there must be he's, he's digging for the energy, digging for some other Trevenant pieces on Sam's side here, because what he did not find what he needed off that Ace Trainer. Um, gives Jose an additional card. So you're lots of shuffling, getting a good wrist workout here to Hartford, Connecticut, and we'll see what we get here off this let loose. Yeah, although I'm I'm really curious what Sam could hit in this specific 
point. I, I mean, we, he could go back to what he was trying in the first game, which is getting closer to knocking something out. I think that's a good start. Uh, let's see, we got some aggro Lele going on here. Driving to come down with the through Ascension, and then we're going to pass over to Jose's turn. Jose draws another energy. May even attach it to Tapu Lele just to kind of give him all his different outs here and just <laughs> keep coming through with this barrage of damage. d Valley getting bumped by Skyfield. You know, Jose's done a wonderful job just showing us what his deck is made of, what it is all about. I'm a, I already said I was a little surprised to see Rayquaza here in the finals. And one thing I will confidently say is I'm even more surprised to see Shaman being the MVP in the <laughs> second game of this finals match. Shaman right now bulked up, hitting for 330 damage with the 11 energy on board. Wow. Yeah, you know, I, I have seen all sorts of varieties of Shaman do well in tournaments before. I have seen them draw cards. I have seen them deal lots of damage. I have seen them deal come from behind damage. But I can't say that I've seen Shaman dealing 300 plus damage turn after turn after turn. Shaman's definitely been in the weight room, put all the energy on its back here, has a team behind him, ready to take all the blows here. 330, but here we go. Sam's side and going to see six cards. Jose only going to see two. Yeah, although at this point, Jose's like, you know what? I can go ahead and see zero. Go ahead and function just like that because now with so many OHKO options here on Jose's board, it's a foregone conclusion at this point. He is going to be the regional champion, but Sam is going to go ahead. He, We've talked about this before. Even if you are in a virtually hopeless situation, you got to keep on playing and you got to go ahead and show the whole situation respect because you know what? You're here. You've earned the spot. You got to go ahead and give it the whole college try. Fully agree there. Uh, Mysterious Treasure, going to go ahead and discard the, looks like a Bridget's, and he's going to search the deck for a psychic Pokemon. Um, a lot of Trevenants have been gone, have gone to the discard pile, a lot of which did not have a Rescue Scarf there. So let's see here. He does going to evolve the Ditto on Bench, which gives him a chance to get the break the following turn. Uh, rescue Scarf in hand as well, going to the Active Phantom, D-Valley, and here we go again, trying Ascension. Emphasis on the try part here because we've seen a lot of Pokemon get knocked out already. Got that Ascension going on, and that seems to be, if I've got my count right, the last Trevenant. Last Trevenant. Here's the one thing I just noticed as he was going through his deck. He does play the Tapu Lele promo. Jose bumping with the last Stadium and a Let Loose. But back to the Tapu Lele point there. If he can get a couple more Silent Fears off here before Jose can win, Tapu Lele may be able to do that uh, spread damage attack there to take multiple knockouts here potentially. That's a very good point, and I think that that might have been an out Sam was playing to all along in both of these games. Although with a combined 150 damage on Jose's board, He's not really too worried about that. The absolute worst thing I could imagine happening at this spot in the game. Oh, and we've got the Guzma for the game. And Jose Marrero is your 2019 Hartford, Connecticut regional champion in the Masters division. It was a fantastic game there. Uh, unfortunately there, I think the match was just very skewed uh, because of the ban of wallet there. Turn one item lock, all gone there. Jose able to explode both game and even more so game two through Voltage, Voltage GX, uh, getting 11 energy on board yeah, and man. sweep through the trees there. Sweeping through the trees with uh, grass Pokemon with Shaman, dealing over 300 damage a turn. I got to say, uh, you know what, I'll reiterate what I said earlier. I'm a little surprised to see Rayquaza here, but I'm even more surprised to see Shaman where it was. But then again, that's the expanded format, folks. Metagame shifts galore, all sorts of exciting options with over eight years worth of cards to choose from. And this is why we've seen so many changes in such a short amount of time. Absolutely there. So what we're going to do here, we're going to take a brief second here. Going to grab Jose, your Hartford Connecticut Regional Championship for an interview. Be right back with you here shortly.
Welcome back to uh, LGN Streams here in Hartford, Connecticut. We do have our regional finalist, Sam Ertman, piling the Trevenant deck right now. Uh, Sam, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> uh, kind of unfortunate draws in that last match, but I can't complain. Uh, got lucky in my top four. Uh, obviously, my opponent had to leave, so I'm just thankful for the finish. Not yeah. Let's, let's go back to that top four matchup there. We did see that Croxton what, did have to go, uh, but he was playing Shock Lock. Were you yeah. nervous about that matchup at all? Well, I mean, it depends on the list. Him in particular, he didn't play the Lysander, so essentially I get my Trevenant out and he can't de-evolution spray. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it would be pretty much an auto win in that sense. So that's why he decided to just go home, get a head, on, head start on driving. Absolutely there. So we had a long day of two days of Pokemon here. Uh, what led you to play Trevenant here and what kind of matchups did you kind of hit this weekend? Well, uh, the past two reg expanded regionals, uh, Ontario and Daytona, I'd been piloting Trevenant, seeing some pretty good success, so I figured, you know, if it ain't broke, might as well just go with it again. Um, and then, especially after uh, Daytona, we saw a, a lot of Picarom, or obviously Picarom got second, so I mm -hmm. figured, uh, you, like, for this weekend, we might see an increase in decks like Hitmonwob and, uh, you know, weird stuff, and that actually ended up being the case. So, for example, like, I played against the Regirock XY promo, Oh, that was, yeah. Was it Katrin? Yeah, Katrin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was pretty favorable. I played, like, I think three Hitmonwob, and so essentially, like, those matchups are incredibly favorable, and there's, like, a very low chance you lose those. So. Yeah, it kind of, the meta to the, this week kind of made me feel, go back to, like, Toronto, the flip side, where everyone was hyping Pikachu Zekrom, yeah. and then to your point there, the Hitmonwobs came yeah. up, and everyone else saying, you know what, Hitmonwob, let me bring back my Trevenant. Exactly, the Trevenant's yeah. had a fantastic showing there, and then numerous different types of lists of Trevenant this weekend there, you opting to go the more conservative route with yep. your enhanced hammers here, and an SP on yeah. the so uh, you know, let's talk about your different Pokemon inclusions there and why you led to that decision versus some playing like 1-1 one, one Garbodor and such. Well, for me, I like to have a, you know, the ability to beat any single deck I play. I don't want to be immediately out of the game just based off of the matchup. So, for example, I keep the Espeon EX in there just in case I were to hit a Zoroark Garbodor. Uh, I didn't actually end up playing any, so I didn't use its attack once, but I just like to have it in there. Um, and then the Wobbuffet's good all around, but... You know, other cards that I decided to play from, you know, my original Ontario list, I decided to cut an Enhanced Hammer for the Faba, which ended up coming uh, in big for the um, Sableye Garbodor matchup. Because I could get rid of the Floatstone yeah. and get the lock. And so, yeah. Well, what we'll do here, we'll go ahead and present to you here. Won't take it out of the bag here for it. Keep it nice and fresh. Thank and uh, finalist here, Sam Erdman, congrats again on your finish here. Thank All you your hard work for the day, too. And we'll be right back here shortly with Jose Marrero, your champion. Welcome back here. We do have Jose Marrero, your Hartford Pokemon Regional Champion here with his favorite deck, Rayquaza GX. I've been dying to ask you this, Jose, all weekend. You piloted Rayquaza GX through every standard event, every expanded event, multiple uh, high-level finishes here. Why Rayquaza GX? Uh, <laughs> hmm. I just like the speed and power it has, the ability to one-shot pretty much anything you're going against and... The deck is just super consistent, and the only thing where you have to worry about is some of the mills are bad. Like if you mill your Coco GX mm -hmm. or like your Coco Prism. Yep. But other than that, the, the most matchups are fine for the deck. Like 50-50 or better, I think. So has this deck evolved for you much throughout the season? Has the list stayed pretty consistent, or have you kind of had different inclusions depending on the meta? Yeah, uh, I think I started playing it in Greensboro, was it expanded, and then since then. My buddy Jeff, Chris from Florida, shout out to Jeff. <laughs> he ended up getting ninth, bubbling ninth. He played same 60. And then from there, I, I, I made day two, but I, day two was just super bad for me. So I was like, so I ended up fit top 64. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to play the deck again. Change one card since Daytona. Changed, forgot what I changed, but I changed one card. And... <laughs> 
Ended up getting ninth there, bubbling ninth there. I was like, you know, I'm going to play it again. I'm two for two in day twos. Yeah. Why not just play it again? Yeah, absolutely. Here, and we see here, got the success here, bringing home the championship as well. Let's talk about your game a little bit here. Um, we do see here the full power Rayquaza GX here. Game one, being able to uh, just get an explosive turn and attack and pass there. Um, at any point there, after those silent fears going there, did you feel, uh, you know, worried at all that he might be able to pull up some counter plays there with Tapu Lay or anything like that? Yeah. Or what were you kind of eyeing down as you were still proceeding the Dragon Break with this Trev's active? Uh, well, at first I was, like, worried about Muck. When he did all evolve to Trev, I, I thought to my head, like, hmm, no Muck means this match is going to be a lot easier. I mean, I can just freely retreat with the Zoros. And I knew he played the Lele, the, the one that spreads. Yep. But and I just didn't bench... I didn't overbench, so at one point he would have been able to get game off of it, but he would have been 30 damage short from winning the game. Absolutely here. And I want to say here, uh, I watched outside of this game here, I also watched uh, your game two against John Ng here. And I want to say there's now two instances I've seen in top eight here where you had to hit a certain top deck or oh let loose God, to a certain yes. card here. Both cards having to be Guzma. So the Marsh Shadow there being the let loose there to find the Guzma uh, for the game. Going into game two, um, one thing that's pressing in there is being able to find energy under item lock, and you were able to use Zero or GX there. Yeah. So let's talk about the inclusion of Zero or and GX in your deck. Well, Zero is just yeah, mainly mainly for the for the free retreat aspect, but against decks that are like Garbodor and Wobbuffet, the GX attack is going to be handy. And against decks that like mill your energy, crushing hammer, Sable against Sable Garbodor, I played against against Sable Garbodor and for a day two, beat it with Zero. Yep. Just put all my energy back in, and then what are they going to do? A field full of eight energy. So I have to ask, though, during game two, when you got up to, I think, 11 energy on board, was that the highest damage you have done with Rayquaza, or in this instance, Shaman, uh, mm. so far with the deck? With Shaman, yes. Probably, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely there. So a little bit off off uh, take there here. We do know you play Rayquaza Vikavolt also in a standard format there. Uh, have you had a chance to look at the new Charger Bug of Vikavolt and Unbroken uh. Bonds? If so... How do you feel about those inclusions? I have a little bit. It, it uh, attaches to a Vika Volt, correct? Yeah, it's charge a bug and double energy to a Vika Volt, yeah. Yeah. Uh, seems good, but I don't know how I'm going <laughs> to make room for it. Yeah. But I'll, it probably work. I'll be in the lab. <laughs> working some things out. I'll probably try it. Well, everyone be aware uh, for Jose posting out those lists there. Next when article. When, when next article right there. Keep an eye out for it here. But you know what? We're going to go ahead and present to you your trophy. I'll keep it in the bag for you. Hey. Congratulations again on your victory here in Hartford. Uh, Team ARG captain as well. Nice and shiny, nice and clean, fingerprint free, nice. free for now. And nice. uh, <laughs> what we're gonna go, <laughs> what we'll do here, Jose. Congrats yet Appreciate again it. here. We'll cut back here. We'll be back here with some uh, thank you to our sponsors.